this interesting story pulls you in. It makes you want to study how the Earth's climate varies over time, how the Earth's climate has cycles. There's a lot of talk lately about the climate. We can't change the climate. We can't modify the climate. We can't even battle against the climate. We can't really help the environment until we have mastered fusion energy. Some cycles repeat over tens of years. The solar cycle lasts 22 to 23 years. Some astronomers tell the public that the solar cycle is about 11 years, but that's just plain stupid. Each half of the cycle has op opposite magnetic polarity. Some cycles repeat over hundreds of years. There's one significant cycle that varies over 1,470 years. I really want to talk about that one because we are now at the peak of one of those cycles. There is one significant cycle that repeats every 20 to 22,000 years. Finally, there are other cycles that vary over hundreds of thousands of years and millions of years. There is a great wealth of scientific information on cycles. These cycles are embedded in ice. They are embedded in fossilized tree trunk rings. They are embedded in ocean sediments. Just like tree rings, in the deserts of the Sahara, there are giant rings that were formed by ancient lakes. The ancient shorelines of Lake Chad are very interesting. They should, be, they should have definitive influence in the current discussion of climate cycles and global warming. It is extremely interesting to study the ancient mega lakes of Africa. Of the ancient mega lakes, Lake Chad is the real intrigue. For example, did you know there once was a 135 mile long river that flowed east from Lake Chad that flowed into the Nile River. It was a short river, however, it was over three miles wide. Let me give you just a brief presentation on the remarkable information easily available to us. On one of its flights, the space shuttle brought up a radar in its payload bay. The mission was called the Shuttle Radar Topography Mission, or SRTM for short. This allowed scientists to accurately measure the Earth's elevations. This elevation data contains a wealth of valuable information. This is easy to find on the internet. If you'd like to find this information, just search on SRTM. Here is an overall image from that mission of Africa's topography. This image has elevations for Africa that are color coded. Red, orange, and yellow are lower. Green is higher. Let's zoom in on a portion of Northern Africa. I've done something interesting to this graphic with Photoshop. I compressed the colors. The greens are darker, the reds are darker. This makes the elevations look more dramatic. Let's zoom in a little further and compress the colors even more. As you can see, the colors are very compressed. This image is centered over the Lake Chad Basin. In this image, it is very red. In its middle is the current position of Lake Chad. In the next image, I've added colors to show how big Lake Chad once was. As climatic cycles have varied, Lake Chad has become bigger and smaller. At its largest point, Lake Chad was about this big. There's two details that are significant here. There are geological facts that indicate Lake Chad was once this height. Its depth would have been about 460 meters above sea level. At this depth, it would have been the biggest lake in the history 
of the world. When it was this large, Lake Chad flowed to the east through a channel. This easterly flow filled the lake I have labeled No Name. This unnamed lake would have been one of the biggest lakes in the history of the world. However, nobody talks about it. From this lake, the waters flowed north. In other words, at one point in history, Lake Chad was the head of the Nile River. I will talk about another lake to the north of the Darfur region of Sudan. It was a much smaller lake. Recently, scientists discovered this ancient mega lake using ground penetrating radar. There are two really intriguing points in this image. One is on the south flank of Lake Chad. See the finger of water to the south? At one point in history, there was a mountain range that created a dam in front of this finger. The second location was on the northeast side of the no-name lake. At one point in history, there was a natural dam up here somewhere as well. In this image, I've removed these two natural dams. I don't know when these two dams disappeared. My guess is they broke about two to three million years ago. Maybe these events happened only one million years ago. I know this will be controversial. However, I don't consider it my role to date these two events. When these two dams broke, just imagine how big the floods were. Anyhow, when the No Name Lakes natural dam broke, its waters flooded to the north, to the Mediterranean Sea, through what is now the Nile River Valley. This flooding event may have even created the Nile. In this graphic, the blue arrow points to the current valley the Nile flows through. There is a second valley to the west, to the left. The flood may have created this western valley. Now, let's look at the other flood. This was probably much more dramatic. It really interests me. There was a mountain range, a mountain ridge, located on the south side of Lake Chad. By all appearances, this was a weak mountain range. My guess is it failed the first time Lake Chad reached its maximum size. My guess is as Lake Chad filled and drained, each time it reached its maximum size, it broke through the southern flank with another flood. There is ancient sediment in the ocean, in the Gulf of Guinea. This evidence shows there was at least five or six major floods. The first was massive. Each later flood was smaller. Anyhow, after the first major dam break, after Lake Chad burst through its southern flank for the first time, it was never able to refill deep enough to flow east. After this massive flood, Lake Chad stopped being the head of the Nile River. Every 20 to 22,000 years, Lake Chad fills. Over time, it dries out. Because of erosion on its southern flank, each time it refills, it can't quite reach its previous height. In this image, Lake Chad was quite large. It probably reached this size only two or three times. In this image, we see a smaller Lake Chad. I get a kick out of reading scientific articles on Lake Chad. Some scientists think this was Lake Chad's largest size. Other scientists think they are crazy. After all, you can't refill the lake to this level because it would drain out its southern flank. I can't believe this smaller size is the controversial size. Obviously, the lake was much bigger, as I have just shown. Anyhow, there should be no controversy here. The lake has left behind many rings of ancient shorelines as it has filled and drained. The ancient shorelines might be difficult to date exactly, however, nobody can deny they exist. Initially, the draining was from the sudden flooding event as the southern flank repeatedly eroded and collapsed. Later in history, the draining was primarily caused by 
the wet and dry cycles of the Sahara Desert that repeat every 20 to 22,000 years. If you've never heard of this, you may wish to study the Milankovitch cycle. Now, th there may be some skeptics out there. Maybe somebody doesn't believe that Lake Chad reached a height of 460 to 463 meters above sea level. After all, that is a scientifically shocking height. If Lake Chad once flowed to the east, then how did it do so? This is quite easy to show. There is a channel to the east of Lake Chad. This channel has never been named, so I can't tell you what it's called. Instead, let me show it to you. In this image, I have drawn the channel blue. It is quite easy to see. However, let's zoom in on this location a little. Again, this is high resolution topographical information from the shuttle radar topography mission. Let's zoom in a little closer. In this image, the channel is obvious. I've colored the next image to make it even more obvious. The water flowed from Lake Chad in the west to the unnamed lake to the east. Along this channel, there is really only one small town of note. It lies on the south bank. Its height above sea level is usually listed at 463 meters above sea level. I don't know how deep the channel is. I'm guessing 460 meters. It might only be 458 meters. Keep in mind, when Lake Chad was full, its massive amount of water would have pushed the Earth's crust down in this area. Perhaps, when the lake was full, this entire area might have been compressed about 10 meters lower. I've never been to this part of Africa. This town has a sad history. It is located in the Central African Republic. 